Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teresa. This is Lost My Thread. Today I want to let you know what I've been up to during week four of Me Made May. So the end of May is closing in on me, or that is definitely a bit of the feeling that I've been having. I have been working hard during this month to get through all of the refashions that I wanted to do. I've talked about this in previous videos, but I've pulled out all the clothes from my wardrobe and I've been gradually, gradually working through things that needed a little bit of adjustment in order for them to be more wearable. I will put a link to the playlist up here and down in the description box if you wanna watch previous videos, including when I shared what my pledge was. But I wanna tell you what I've been refashioning and altering at the beginning of the video and then at the end, I will tell you what I've been wearing over the last week. So I'm going to start with the smaller alterations. I will say they are all on the smaller side, but they're all things that definitely needed to happen. And this first one, this is a dress. This is a La Brea Tea dress hack. So it's the La Brea Tea by Half Moon Atelier hacked into a dress. This is made in a really beautiful linen fabric that I got from the Fabric Godmother. I made this one quite a while ago and I actually refashioned this one. I wouldn't say refashioned. I did a little alteration last year on this dress because it was just not easy for me to get on and off and I found that I just wasn't wearing it. I had intended for it to be pulled up and over my head, but it was just a little bit snug because it is relatively fitted in the waist and so I just wasn't wearing it and I thought, well, actually the best way to make it easy to get on and off is I inserted, I wanna show you the invisible zip, but it's so invisible. It's honestly pretty hard to see, but I put an invisible zip in the back and I was wearing it more. And because I was wearing it more, the bias binding around the neckline started to come away. So I'll pop in a picture of what it was looking like, but basically I didn't want to be wearing it like it was because the linen itself was starting to just break away. This is quite a loose weave linen, lin, loose weave linen. Linen, I will say in general, is usually a fairly loose weave, so you do have to be careful about fraying edges and things. And so what I decided to do was to go ahead and change the bias binding out. I decided to just cut it because I could see that I had lost some of the fabric where it was fraying away. So I just cut it all a little bit wider. It's not massively different. It's just a little bit wider and a little bit deeper in the neckline, but there was plenty of room for that to still be comfortable and still be wearable. And then I added a new bias binding and this is really sweet. It's got these little hearts. I don't know if you'll be able to see, hopefully you can see. This is actually scraps that I had left over from a blouse that I made, a shirt that I made rather. And I really loved the shirt, I really loved the fabric, and I decided to just go ahead and whip up a whole load of bias binding of whatever I had left over. And definitely I am happy with how nice and neat that is right there. And it is generally gonna be now back in my wardrobe. I don't have to be scared about it falling to pieces. I will say I did also just surge around that top edge of the neckline after I trimmed it down, just because I don't wanna end up in the same place next May. I want this one to now be just ready to wear. The next one is another one that I will say is a Fairly small change, but definitely a big impact. And that is this dress. This is the Matilda dress by Megan Nielsen Patterns in a really gorgeous viscose linen fabric that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. This is actually, I think, the first indie pattern that I actually purchased. It's not the first one that I made, but it's the first one that I bought. And this is my first version. It just took me a while to get around to making it. But I really do love this dress. And it's something that I feel like I see in my wardrobe and I don't grab it and I can't understand or I couldn't understand why I wasn't grabbing it. And I pick all the other dresses that I have that I love and I know that I feel great in this one, I love the way that it looks, but there was just something about it that was putting me off and so I decided I was gonna put it on this month. I've actually worn it in this past week so I'll talk a little bit about that later. But when I was wearing it, I worked out what the problem was. The armhole is just way too narrow. We are talking like digging into your armpits, uncomfortable, narrow. Now I am somebody who never has to make that adjustment otherwise. I've never had problems with things not fitting me in the shoulders, um, fitting me along the armholes. So it's an unusual one. And I'd be curious to hear if you guys have made this dress, if you found the same thing, because when I was looking at photos on the hashtag, it did look like it was really tight up under the armpits for I think probably every version or at least most of the versions that I saw. So I don't know if that's just an issue with the drafting of this. Now, like I said, I bought this one a long time ago. I actually bought it as a paper pattern before I even knew how to use a PDF pattern. 
And actually, one of the great things about using PDF, which is part of why I use them now, is that if the pattern gets updated or changed, you get sent the updated version. So I know this dress has been updated because it's been expanded the size range, and I'd be curious to know if the new version has like a better fit for the armhole, or maybe it is just a quirk for me in the my shape and the size that I made, who knows? But definitely on future versions, I will be increasing the diameter of that armhole. But what I decided I needed to do to make this more wearable is to actually just remove that binding. So it's like a, a binding that goes around the whole armhole. I really like the look of it and I like that it's in the same fabric. I think that's really cool, but I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to do that again because I wasn't gonna have the same amount of fabric. I didn't have any of that same color left over. And so if I remove that armband and increase the size of the hole, it was never gonna fit. So I decided I would just do just standard bias binding on that seam. And I will say, you know, it changes the look a little bit, but I don't think it changes the look very much. And certainly it is now, like I said, it's wearable. I'm gonna be able to wear it. I used the same heart bias binding because it matched really well. And like I said, I made a whole ton of, I've actually got even more of it because I feel like it's just really cute and it's just a nice one to have. I usually put my bias binding around an old spool head just because it's easy to keep hold of and it just stays nice and neat on there. But yeah, so I will say putting this on now, once I open up that armhole, it's like a whole new dress. I tell you, it feels so free and open and really comfortable and definitely way, way better, particularly for like hot days. I do think there is a factor that this fabric, being a linen fabric, it is a relatively thicker fabric. So I suppose when you think about when you're going around the armhole, you've got the binding that was folded in half and you've also got the main fabric. So you have two layers of the, bi the binding folded in half and the main fabric in the middle. You're going through five layers of fabric. So I'm sure that didn't help and it added a little bit of bulk there because I do also have a cotton lawn version of this dress and I don't have the same issue. But definitely, like I said, future versions, I'll just open up that armhole a bit more. But this one now is right back in my wardrobe and I'm so excited because I really do love this dress. And I'm so glad that I worked out what the problem was. Sometimes you really just have to make the effort to stop and think, what isn't working about this? And sometimes it's an easy fix. The next one is an interesting one to me. So this is a dress that I actually talked about last year. So this is the Akini dress by So Explicit. Sorry, I couldn't remember the name. I'll put um, details down in the description box. This dress is so stunning. It is really gorgeous. I love the fabric. This is designed by Rachel Parker for Dashwood Studio. It's a rayon fabric, viscose fabric. I got it from Bobbins and Buttons. I cut this one on the bias. So it's a bias cut dress. So it has really incredible drape and movement, which I think works so well with this cowl neck. But what I mentioned last year, I thought I wasn't wearing it very often because it was more for like hot days because it is very lightweight, it's sleeveless. I felt like mm, maybe if I had some hotter weather, I would wear it, but I'm happy to keep it and we'll just see. And I had quite a lot of hot days last summer and I still never wore it. And so this year when I was pulling out everything to work out what I wasn't wearing and why, I had to figure out what was it about this dress because it was not just that it was lightweight and that it was sleeveless because I have other things that are more like that that I'm wearing why am I not wearing this dress? And when I put it on and I looked at how I was looking in it, I think what it is for me is that it just felt a little bit too dressy, a little bit too, I almost wanna say like Sunday best. When I am wearing dresses casually, I usually have like a fairly casual style. Even when I go to work, I will say, I can be a little more on the dressy side, but that one just felt just too much. It just felt like something to wear more to, I don't know, like an outing, an event not to work, not for day to day. And I think the main reason for that was that high-low hem. So it was shorter at the front than it is at the back. I mean, I think it is a really beautiful detail, but it, I think with the combination of that fabric, that neckline, that hem, for me, it was just stopping me from wearing it, just feeling a little bit too dressy. So I decided the best way to make it feel less dressy is to just make a straight hem, shorten it a little bit, and now is much more kind of cute and playful, less dressy, and I do think that I'm gonna be reaching for it much more. We'll see, I'll let you guys know if not, it might come back in next May if I'm still not wearing it, but I'm really hoping that it will now be more of a lovely summer staple in my wardrobe. 
The last one I would say is definitely also still more of an alteration than a total refashion. And this is a ready to wear dress that I got from a shop called Oasis. It's in a really lovely viscose fabric. I really do love the print on there. The colors are really beautiful. I also love that there's just so much trim on here. I really love these trim details. I feel like I need to experiment with trim at some point, but that's like another topic for another day because I really love the way it looks. I just haven't had much experience of doing that stuff myself. And you could totally add these details onto a really simple dress and make it look really elevated. But this dress, I will say, I, I wasn't wearing, and the main reason is because it shrunk. The first time I washed it, it shrunk massively. So I did buy it, tried it on the shop, really liked it. As soon as I put it on when it came out of the wash, it was a bit tighter, manageable, but tighter. But more importantly, it was so short. It was way shorter than I intended it to be. And this is one that I was hoping to wear for work. I want it to look quite professional. I liked that because it's a dark color and a slightly longer sleeve, I could wear it in the winter as well as in the summer. And I feel like it was just an absolute no-go. And I didn't really have it anywhere that I was gonna wear it. It was definitely a little bit more dressy than I would wear like on a day-to-day. -day. It was very very much intended to be a work dress. I did wear it a few times with some dark tights and I think I kind of got away with it, but seriously, I never felt really comfortable in it. And I just knew that it was one that also over time was getting a little bit more tighter just generally around the bust and the torso because my body has been changing over the years as all of our bodies do. And I felt like I needed to try and do something to save this dress. And the most obvious thing to me was to actually just add some extra fabric. So that's what I did. So I picked up some viscose fabric. It's actually a viscose lawn fabric from Sew Me Sunshine. And I just inserted a panel of black. Let me see if I can rotate it so you can see black viscose. This is just, I think it's, what is it, an inch? Just over an inch, I think it's an inch and a quarter, all the way down from the sleeve, because even the sleeve on my forearm was a bit tight after it shrunk, and going all the way down the side seam, so that continues all the way down to the bottom. And then also, to make it longer, I inserted a little panel at the bottom. It's gonna be a lot easier to show you photos of the dress, but I feel like I need to try and show it to you up on camera. So it's not a very long panel. It's about three and a half inches long, that panel. But I feel like that then also ties it together with this little side insert so it doesn't look too peculiar. We've got these little black inserted sections. And I feel like with all of this trim that you've got going on, to have additional black sections, I feel like doesn't look too bizarre. I feel like it looks like it could be part of the original design. Now, I will say when I was going to be doing all this, I was expecting to just have to cut the dress off part way down, but I realized at the very bottom there's actually a little flounce there, and so I was able to remove that flounce and insert the black panel above that, and that to me I feel like makes it look more intentional. And I will say the fit is way better. The length I'm much happier with, and I think it looks pretty cool. I actually feel like it kind of maybe modernized it a little bit. I feel like I'm liking the look of this dress and I think it's definitely gonna be a go-to now for me in my workwear wardrobe. So I now just have one more, I would say like a total refashion that I'm trying to get done before the end of the month. When I'm filming this, it is the 29th of May, so I technically still have today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, three more days, well, two and a half days probably, if you count the rest of today, to try and get that one done. But I will say I am most of the way through, so I'm feeling really optimistic, and I think I'm going to achieve my goal that I set for myself at the beginning of May. Now I just want to quickly run through with you guys what I wore for this last week. On the 22nd of May, I was wearing a full me made outfit that I feel like coordinated really well together. I really do like these as a combination. It was the first time I put them together. The hoodie is the Journey hoodie by Sinclair Patterns. It's a raglan style hoodie. I really like the construction of this hoodie. It is really satisfying when the zip goes in. It comes together really neatly and it's finished beautifully on the inside and the outside. For the main fabric, I used a black and white striped French terry fabric that I got from Self Made. And then for some of those contrast details, I used a mint green cotton jersey. I feel like they worked really well together. The colors together are really fun. I also really enjoyed using the stripe for the hoodie because I was able to play with the stripe direction. I was really impressed with my stripe matching on this one as well. 
it's particularly obvious to see when that hoodie is zipped up but it's a really cool hoodie and I really do love that one and then I'm putting that over the top of my Concord tee by Cashmerette it's one of the ones that I did a Cricut design that I designed and I put on it and it's an iron-on transfer I think it's a really fun little pop of color on a basic it's like a charcoal gray t-shirt this is a recycled poly cotton blend that I got from poly cotton jersey that I got from the fabric godmother the trousers are the ultimate trousers by sew over it in a stretch needle cord fabric that I got from sew me sunshine these are probably my most warm pair of trousers because they are just so so comfortable I like the high-waisted I like that they are really soft and stretchy they have a side zip, which is not my favorite thing on trousers, but I've actually realized that the good thing about the side zip is you don't have anything digging into your tummy when you sit down from like a front fly. So I'm kind of digging the side zip, but definitely these trousers I love and I feel like all those colors work really well together and it was a really super comfortable outfit to wear. On the 23rd of May, I was wearing the Freya top from the Tilly and the Button stretch book in a viscose jersey that I got from Self Made. I feel like a navy blue top is always gonna have a place in my wardrobe and I do reach for this one all the time. I think I need to remember that and probably get some more navy blue tops in my life. It's not the most exciting thing to make, but it's just such a good neutral in my wardrobe and it pairs well with so many things. The design of this top I feel like also works really well that it can feel a little bit more dressed up or down. I like the three quarter length sleeve which makes it more versatile to wear different times of the year. I did do a full bust adjustment on this one and I feel like that helps me to get a better shape for me. Really do love this top, wear it all the time. And then over the top of that I'm wearing my Jenny overalls from Closet Core Patterns in a green needle cord that I got from Higgs and Higgs. This is not a stretch needle cord. I do like needle cord because it's not as heavy as a full on corduroy and I feel like it has a little bit of give to it, like mechanical give, even if it isn't stretchy. I like the design of these overalls in general. I like the wide leg and I feel like that makes this one really great for like the spring, even summer and definitely into the autumn months. If it was like a tighter leg, I feel like it wouldn't be as breathable and I wouldn't want to wear it in the warm months. And being needle cord, it wouldn't be as comfortable to wear in the really cold months. So I feel like I kind of nailed it with getting the right fabric for this one. I also just love the overall design and the shape of this one. I feel like I have the fit spot on for this one. It is really great and skims my, fi my figure in just all the right places. I love all the finishing details on this one. I feel like it looks so professional. It feels so professional. I love all the fastenings and the snaps that I've got on there. On the inside of the front bib, I also lined it with a really beautiful Dashwood Studio. Is it Dashwood? It's a rifle paper coat cotton fabric. And I actually use that same fabric to line my Kali Anorak, also from Closet Core Patterns. So I feel like it's fun that the two of those do match. But this is a really comfortable pair of overalls. I will say I don't reach for it as much just because it is quite figure hugging, but I love it whenever I wear it. And it is always surprisingly comfortable when I put it on. So I need to remember how comfortable it is and hopefully wear that a bit more often. And then on the 24th of May, I was wearing my Concord tee by Cashmerette that I hacked into a dress. Very simple hack. I just add a gathered skirt onto the bottom of it. This fabric came from a D stash. It's a cotton model fabric and it is so soft. It has a really nice kind of slinky drape to it, but it feels really wonderful against the skin. I do need to get more cotton model jersey because I really do love how it feels. I love the Concord Tee by Cashmere. It's one of my all-time favorite patterns and I feel like it works really well as a dress hack. And then over the top of that, I was wearing a Blackwood Cardigan by Helen's Closet in a rib knit fabric that I got from Sister Mintaka. In this gray, I feel like it looks slightly blue. I feel like cameras sometimes do funny things with colors. It's a more of a blue gray, but it is definitely a gray. And I wear this one so, so much. It's one of those items that just pairs really well with tons of other items in my wardrobe. I feel like those, these two look really cute together and it was definitely really comfortable. And it, we're in that kind of weather. We have been in that weather where it's still really pretty chilly in the morning and it's really quite cold in the evening. But in the middle of the day, it is warm, like full on summer. So I I feel like I need to be able to wear things that are going to be comfortable when I go into work. I can then take the cardigan off and just be wearing the dress during the day and then put that cardigan off when I'm going home if it's a little bit more chilly. So this was definitely a really good functional but also really comfortable outfit. 
On the 25th of May, I was wearing that Matilda dress that I told you guys about before. So this is a Megan Nielsen's pattern. I really love the look of this shirt dress and I definitely want to make another one soon because it's been a little while since I made one and I love the fit. I love the shape on me. I love the big roomy pockets that you have on there. I like the little bust pocket detail as well. I think that is super cute. And the main issue I found I mentioned was I needed to increase the size of the armhole. Now that I've done that, I'm going to be wearing this one even more than I was before. And this is in a really gorgeous gorgeous viscous linen fabric that I got from Sew Me Sunshine paired with that same black wig cardigan because like I said I wear it all the time it's such a great staple on the 26th of May, I was wearing one of my all-time favorites. This is the Zadie Jumpsuit by Paper Theory, made in a really gorgeous floral Lady McElroy viscous lawn fabric. I got this one from the Fabric Godmother. It was one of those rare occasions where I saw a fabric being shown on Instagram. It was a new fabric in, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, get onto the shop, put it in my basket, get that home. And I feel like it was so great for this jumpsuit. I really do always feel amazing in this jumpsuit. This fabric is so gorgeously soft. It feels really wonderful against the skin. I feel like it is cool, it is elegant, it is beautiful, it is sexy. It kind of just does all the things. I really do love this one and I always feel great, like I said. I did a little video of me when I was walking across the stream because it was actually a really beautiful day. It was a day off. My husband and I had gone for a really nice walk. And where we live, there's just so many beautiful outdoor areas, parks and brooks and really nice places to walk around. And we found this little stepping stones to go across the brook that we'd never even seen before in the middle of a really pretty wooded area. So I thought, well, I'm gonna go have a little investigate. And as I was coming back, I asked my husband just to film because I thought it would be fun to see my Zadie jumpsuit in action. The one downside of this particular version, so I actually size down two sizes from what is recommended and that fits me absolutely perfectly. This is also one of the versions where I've actually taken the neckline of the peppermint wrap top and just put that over the top of it because I know that that's a neckline that works really well for me for a wrap top and I feel like it does work perfectly but I don't know if I did something with the pockets but they seem to be particularly shallow on this version compared to my other AD jumpsuits so I can't remember if I did adjust something with the pockets but it just makes it a little bit annoying because I feel like I can't put things really in the pockets very well Let's be honest, pockets on a viscose, like a floppy viscose, even if they go up into the waist seam, they move around quite a lot. They're not terribly functional. So I don't tend to use the pockets a ton, but that's a minor thing. I really love this jumpsuit and it's always a joy when I get to wear it. On the 27th of May, I was wearing the birdie button-up dress. So there's a birdie button-up blouse or dress by Pattern Scout. This is made in a really beautiful Irish linen fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. I really do like their Irish linen fabrics. I've been a bit hit and miss with other fabrics that I bought from them, but I will always buy their Irish linen fabrics pretty happily. I love this color. This is definitely one example of something that is just not a color that technically is supposed to suit me, but I love it and it makes me happy. So. That works for me. I'm not really someone who is too concerned about colors, but I do tend to gravitate towards the ones that I do think suit my coloring in general. But this is one exception where I just love this dress so much. It just brings me so much joy, the brightness, the vibrancy of this color. This dress as well has a really beautiful design. It's got pin tucks going down the front. They're really lovely. It's a really beautiful feminine detail on there. It has a waist tie just to give a little bit of shaping. I actually added some pockets to this one last Me Made May because this didn't come with pockets, which I thought was just so bizarre. I feel like patch pockets work so well on a shirt dress. And so I added those on last May and I've been loving wearing this dress since then particularly. And then over the top of this one, I was wearing the Marlowe sweater by True Bias. This was in a soft knit fabric that I got from Somi Sunshine. I've mentioned this one before because this cardigan comes on a lot. I do really like having that little layer, like I said, if I need a little bit of something for the chill in the morning and the evenings that I can just take off when it's really hot in the daytime, and this one was perfect for that. And finally, on the 28th of May, I was wearing a matching two-piece set. The top is the Ashton Top by Helen's Closet, and the skirt is a self-drafted shirt skirt. I did want to be able to wear these together or separately. I think they are a really fun combo. I will say these colors together are definitely not typical colors that I would go for, but they are colors that I had seen paired together on other people, and I really loved how bright and vibrant the colors were, how much they popped. It definitely felt like dopamine dressing to me, dressing with color to bring you happiness. And I will say when I was wearing it, I was really enjoying looking down and seeing these colors on myself. 
a little bit out of my style comfort zone but I am kind of enjoying wearing these two together the more I wear them. I made them towards the end of last summer so I didn't have a ton of opportunities to wear them but I'm going to be interested to see how much they get worn in my wardrobe over the coming seasons. But like I said, I do think they're a fun combo. I think the top is obviously fairly oversized and I think having that shirt skirt just to bring in a little bit underneath and the waist just balances well. I did do a video talking about how I made this set together and particularly the skirt because one of the things I love about this skirt is that it is completely adjustable. So if I pull it up so that the shirt section is across my bust, I have some straps that I can just snap in place. So I've got some removable snaps that can make it a strappy shirt bodice dress that is just, it's short, but it's not crazy short, super fun and playful. And it works really well either way. But I will say this one has just really great volume and movement. The size of the kind of fullness of that skirt at the bottom is just really wonderful. Can't remember if I mentioned this is a cotton double gauze fabric. They're both cotton double gauze fabrics that I got from Somi Sunshine. It's a fun, playful outfit and it was a nice way to round out the week. Now I had considered when I was making this video, do I just hold off to the end of May and just do like the final week four and the next few days? but I wanted to keep it separate. And partly it's because in the next video, I wanna talk a little bit more about my thoughts and reflections on what the month has been like for me, lessons that I've learned, things that I wanna take away from it. But also I do still have some work to do as far as refashions. And I thought it would be great just to keep you guys updated, just so that you know I'm on top of it with my tasks. And we'll see what I get up to in my next video. I'm really looking forward to sharing you with you the final days of everything I've been up to in May, what I've been wearing for the last few days of May, but more importantly, what lessons I've learned along the way. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please do give me a like if you did. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel if you want to see that next video I was talking about or any of my other future videos. I hope you guys are all doing well and I hope to see you very soon. Bye!